All right, so here we are once again with another video of a long time, and in this video we'll be taking a look on the Bob Switch scanner. Cause as we have seen in the previous, you know, a lot of tweets, a lot of resources that, yeah, Bob scanner can be a very good tool, and we can do a lot of things with it. But usually we don't get anything. So there are many in many cases I have seen that uh, most of the people are not using it the right way. There's a lot of things that we can perform using it. It's not limited to any sort of specific. Thanks. So we'll be taking a look onto that. This channel does not promote or encourage any illegal activities. All contents provided by this channel is meant for educational purpose only. But before we end the video, if you are having few announcements here, we are having the advanced bug bounty batch training six out now. It will be starting on three June, I guess, and we'll be doing a lot of things into it. It's a complete live course. If you are following me on Twitter on the other platforms, then you must know that we are having a lot of good results. A lot of reviews are posted on YouTube, so you can definitely take a look on the channel. And here are the contents. Now this is not limited to this contents. If you just take a look on the website, you will see that there is a lot of things going on, including the detailed contents. So you can take a look on that one. And that is all the promotions. Let's get in the video. So here we are on the computer screen now, and as we have seen the title, that look, pop scanner might be a very great thing that we might need to use. A lot of people say that, but most of the thing I have seen that. Not many people are using it correctly. Maybe just doing the right click and send it to scanner. It doesn't work like that. So we'll be taking a very deep look into it, but first of all, I'm not using the original professional. We'll be using a crack here, so that would be more compatible for you. And we'll be using the 23.1 version of it. That's a simple thing. Target proxy all the tabs. Most of you might know it, and if you want a complete video about Bob Switch, let me know. So here we are, and let's take a look at our Firefox. It's all configured, so we don't have to play with it anymore. So let's see. This is the main scanner thing. Then the live task and scan. I'm just gonna close all this and only turn on the new scan. Now we can do two things: crawling and auditing. Both of the things that might be very useful because we want to crawl the whole site, see what vulnerabilities are there, and all this type of things. But come on, we do a lot of more things than that. If you want to do logins and all these things, you can definitely add one. Like simply do the login. Username would be admin. Admin. That would be a good one because you might be using them. Recorded login sequences if you have anyone, but no. Then we have the resource pool. We can just definitely set for how many concurrent requests you would like to use, delays between them, all these type of things, and we can make it. So I'll just delay a thousand. Maximum concurrent request would be twenty, and I'll just name it the testing. And that's all. We can just save it like this. And the main thing is scan configuration. How we how we would like to scan it. Like we can use a custom one or a preset. Just a lightweight, a fast one, a very deep one, or a balanced one. So I would usually go with the custom. You can just simply click on import and see if you have any one like that. Or you can make a new one for auditing. So now that's the main thing. I'm making it 23 May. Let's name it today's date. And we need to take a look on this optimization. You can just see audit speeds. I would just mark it normal usually. You can go to the issues reported, or you can just select which one we would like to use. So you can select all the things that you want to use. I'll be showing you later on how to use it in this video. So stay tuned. Ending application headers. Two consecutive errors are there. Skip remaining checks and check for the current insertion point. Now we need to take a look on how to set insertion point. I will show you. Pause the task if 15 consecutive audits fail. So I just usually make it 50. Or you can just make the percentage. I will make the percentage 25. Or we can usually make it 40. Then insertion points where you want to insert if you are having a whole request instead of having a single flow of it. Modifying parameters. Do we want to URL to body? You know, change the parameter locations and all this type of things. This might be useful when you are using multiple. Type of checks. Ignore insertion points. Suppose I don't want to take a look on this. Let's. I don't want to take a look on um, session ID. I can remove it. All these things you can definitely set them. I'm just gonna leave it default. 
frequently occurring insertion points are here you can just make them i usually uh, leave them default i just usually remove the cookie one if i want to in some cases but i won't change them gs analysis if you want to you can have it i usually leave it default i don't make much changes to it and then the audit projection option overrides just leave it now just making a 23 me and saving it now you can make a edit using it scan details if you have a url you can scan i'm just going to close it it was a demo now so here we are on the acrylic and we don't want to use it we will go to test php and just simply search hello and then click on go simple we are on now let's add a proxy or we can edit it i'm just going to change my port to 6969 let's see or we can add one more proxy so let me add one more here cool now just take a look at the 69 and here is the button it's working cool so let me search the hacker here this is our request send it to repeater or anywhere you want but i'm not going to send it anywhere i'm going to click on hacker and just right click on it and it will just see that option scan scan selected out uh, insertion point do passive scan do active scan we will use active scan now it is going to do all the scans required on it and it will just find the thing let's pause it delete the thing we don't want to do that we are going to do something else we will see uh we or we will try to open the scan launcher here is a scan launcher this is our exact one and we can set the insertion points here or we can even set this type of thing suppose i only want to uh, look for accesses cool i'm going to go for it and it will only look for accesses if there is any or we can do one more thing just send it to repeater or send it to intruder and then scan defined insertion point so i would like to scan only this parameter so i can simply go to this just make some changes in the source pool scan configurations right so i'm going to import or select from library i'm going to select for new accesses and my older one which is accesses 1 and let's see what result we get and we can even uh, simply see that there is access okay the request the response is here you can just send it to repeater and let's see what's going on here okay we found that if we are just typing something like this we might be having a triggered accesses just send it show response in browser and that's the one now this is not only limited to it you can do a very simple thing you can even do a very good crawling here or passively scanning this might do that for you after crawling it you can add your whole insertion points you can do scan proper and specific outputs like even if you want to use the uh, uh credentials you can use the credentials if you are having any ip with some sort of login portals or in sort of you know uh resource pool something like that so you can use it So the major conclusions I have for this one is use the basic thing that if you are having some sort of specific queries like this, just send it to Intruder, select it, and scan the default insertion ports. If you think there is a reflection, look for the specific ones you want. So in the starting, we have seen that we can uh, clarify, we can set which type of things we would like to use, or we can even just set what we want to use. in the insertion points or the issues reported right we can select what we want to use what we want to scan for so we can definitely make the selection make our own queries for it make the whole library full of it and you can use it in a very precise and configured way and that might help in many many cases i was just showing it for this domain but in the end this might have helped a lot in the whole journey i'm just showing it for the xss you can use it for multiple issues so make sure how you use it and have a good look into it so i guess that was for the video thanks for watching see you guys in the upcoming videos and don't forget to take a look on the courses and the links in the description